everyone again. Um, after our eCoach meeting today, we talked about the two Forest Glen Zoom rooms. And um, because Zoom has opened up its accounts to educators for free and taken off a lot of the limits, we're going to try to keep the two Forest Glen rooms as like a, a virtual school building. So we're going to use those two rooms specifically for PLC meetings and for um, special education meetings, resource meetings, and all staff meetings. Um, a lot of teachers at other schools, and especially looking after spring break, if we end up having to do more online stuff, then Zoom will be really useful for you to use with your whole class. And I think it would be nice for a lot of us to have more than just the half hour time each day and have more liberty to um, use that tool because it is really cool. I know a lot of you have already used it and um, I have siblings in my class so they've been telling me we're so excited to try Zoom. We got to see little brother do it, big brother do it and they love seeing their friends talking but also you can teach a lesson this way. So um, here's what I want you guys to do to create your own profiles. Um, it's important to use the right email address because I have tried three times unsuccessfully and I get my account limited. So um, to create your own Zoom account where you will have up to 100 people available in a room and no time limits, you're going to go to zoom.us, just search for Zoom. And on this website, I want you to click on sign up, it's free. When you do that, it's super important that you put in your email address as you're at msdlt.k12.in.us. Not the staff one, not your Google account, nothing else will work, I promise to you. It must be this one. Then they're going to send you an email. And for Mindy and I both, it took probably five minutes to get that email. So be patient, but you will get an email that looks like this. And it says, activate your account, click on the activate button. You click on that, it will take you to a new window. You will type in your password and everything else. And then on your profile, when you come down here, it's going to say basic. And at first, right here under capacity, um, I'm not sure what it will say, but it will say that you have a 40 minute limit. And it said that for mine too. And once you sat there for a little bit, then this green tab opens right here. And it says important notice, Zoom has removed the 40 minute time limit for schools affected by the coronavirus. The meeting limit on your free basic account has been temporarily lifted. So that is where you get a room of 100 people and there are no limits on time. So um, when you open a new room, let me see if I can show you that. Let me log in here with my new one. All right. When you're in Zoom, you want to click on new meeting if it's right away, but usually for us, it'll be best to schedule one. So you're going to click on schedule meeting. You type what the title is and everything else that you want, when, and here under duration, like with our staff meeting, I put like eight hours because it can last up to that long. Oh no, mine is still having time limits. Hmm. I guess I'll have to go check that out, but it's not supposed to have any time limits on there. So I need to make sure that I'm on my um, school account here. So either way, I don't think most of us at this point are gonna have more than a 45 minute meeting. So let's just pretend for now, but you can schedule everything and you can require a meeting password or not. Um, Chris said that it's best if you're doing like a special education meeting or a room that you need to be secure to require a meeting password but if it's just with your kids, whatever, you don't really have to do that. That's just extra. So you can tinker around with this and schedule it and it will automatically send out that invite for you. So let's just say I'm going to do this. We'll just make that it. That's fine. Um, you can say, I do not, I do not suggest a waiting room. Take that off. That means that you have to approve of everybody who is going to join in. So I don't suggest that. I do suggest muting them on entry. Um, and then... If you want, you can record the meeting. It doesn't really matter. You'll click on schedule. And because Outlook is chosen, it's going to open up my Outlook here with an invite. And that is where I copied and pasted this information for you guys and put that on your email to share with everybody. So once you click on send, your meeting is solidified. You're good to go. So all that's done for you. And then you just go back to your screen on the app that you have and click on 
um, start meeting. There'll be a button that's right here, start meeting. So you start it and then that way it opens it up and you can kind of play with that. I suggest before doing it with your class, maybe doing a little practice one with someone else, even if it's just one of your team members or um, if it's someone at home, another computer, just practice so you can see all the things you can do. And once you have like contact with the kids, I would recommend doing a Zoom just to talk and hang out. And then eventually maybe stick in like a lesson where you can go over like our Forest Glen math packets. I can go over this with them and teach them a lesson. So I suggest doing that. It will give you much more unlimited time on your account. And if you've got any extra questions, just let me know. Thanks guys.